Everybody! No! In the internet world, the... Is that the place? Is that a place? Uh, in internet world? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I believe it's called The Matrix. Is it called The Matrix? I, I, well, I mean, if there's a world constructed out of the internet, it's either that or the Oasis from Ready Player One. Okay, so can you see me? I'm dancing, doing, doing a jig. No. <laughs> I mean, you can always join us in um, <laughs> video chat if you want to. No, I, can. I, uh, I don't have a webcam. No webcam for Matt. Yeah, well, that's okay. My face would only break the stream further. Oh, did, oh, snap. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the sound it would make when it broke. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for joining us, Matthew I. Bishop and Hello? Anime Zing Radio Doug. Hello. How have you old... been, man? Doing good. Things have been absolutely crazy. Of <laughs> course. That's what we do. I think. Is that what More we like do? anime crazing. Crazing, crazing. Raisins? Yeah. Yeah, cra craisins are good. Craisins? Craisins are good. Yeah. Have you... um, I actually found some orange flavored ones at Trader Joe's. Not actually brand name craisins, but dried cranberries were really good. Mm. Not a huge Trader Joe's guy, but that was awesome. Anyways. Ha! <laughs> uh, Trader Joe's is pretty good, I guess. Oh. Mm, Honey, you know They're expensive, okay? Is there a Trader Joe's where you're from, Doug? What was that? Is there a Trader Joe where, where you are at? I think there's Trader Joe's around us. I'm not sure where the closest one is. I think there's one in Foxboro. Hmm. Oh, where are you from again? I forget. Uh, Massachusetts. We are <gasps> just south of Boston. That's right. So when you got to see me last year up in Maine, we had a nice little drive. Oh, wow. That's right, and we saw you... I, well, I saw you. Unfortunately, Matt wasn't there. He couldn't make it. He was in yeah. between houses. Um, <laughs> I, I'm glad he got out from between those houses. Yes. That, that, it was dude, terrible. That was the narrowest alley ever. It's literally squishing. I am invading another yeah. world. So, um, besides me invading another world in the game... Um, I just, so, there's, there's a con coming up that you went to, but this is the spring edition. Um, Great Falls Con. Oh, and yeah. I remember us doing a, like, a weird pseudo podcast there. Yes, we, uh, you, both of us had our equipment there, ready to go, had, did some, um, recording on location with different guests. Uh, you had me come over and chat for a little bit, and well, during the little chat we had, we had, I think, four or five different generations of Doctor Who show up. Yeah, that was quite a bit. You missed out. But this year, Prime is coming with us. Yes, we actually just had on Animazing Radio, was it two weeks ago? I have to look at my schedule. Yeah, two weeks ago, we had Ben Santos as our co-host. Um, so we got to hear all about everything coming up. Unfortunately, we cannot make it due to the fact that uh, most of our resources right now are going into Anime Boston at the end of the month. Makes and sense. Uh, we have a table, we're going to be tabling there with our sponsor, Casey Creations. So if any of our listeners out there are going to make it to Anime, uh, to Anime Boston, yeah. Anime boss. I'm watch. I'm watching Nathan play on Twitch right now, and he just died. Um, <laughs> uh, that's gonna happen a lot. Um, so I'm getting distracted because I suffer from shiny object syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some shiny object. Welcome to my Euro type, dude. Shiny object. Yes. Uh, the, the whole ADHD thing. It doesn't lend well to uh, focusing on focusing up when shiny things are happening. Very true. Yeah. Anyways. I, I, knew, 
I do want to throw a quick shout out to, uh, of course, my sponsors, Casey Creations and Home Circle Media, and a shout out to a good friend of ours, Johnny C, who is a comic creator, and he also has his own coffee. We saw him last weekend at Northeast Comic Con um, nice. at their new location in Boxborough, Mass. And if you get a chance to come down to the next Northeast Comic Con, I think they're doing it at the same location, the Boxborough Regency is absolutely a beautiful hotel the road leading to it is really crappy but what roads in massachusetts aren't with potholes but the hotel is beautiful and i see a lot of potential for growth on this convention nice last year they had some issues they tried to you know bring some life back to a dying mall as they took over a uh cleaned out jc penny store and the setup just wasn't all that great there was there wasn't any smooth flow um if you were tabled in certain areas you saw minimal to no traffic and there wasn't much to begin with so oh gosh oh man um, that's terrible i'm so happy that they moved to a new location and can concentrate on getting things built up again to the glory that they had uh, i guess back in the 80s when gary summers who's the uh promoter of the convention the owner of the convention at one point had 10 cast members from a show and it was the first time since the show that they had an actual reunion with all these members so he's wow. trying to get it back to that to those glory days right. and i can't remember the name of the show to save my butt right now but... oh no well we can't knew. shameless promote him i guess but well i i, I will I will promote him because that is a convention that my wife and I got married at, so. Excellent. Oh, nice. yeah. Well, when you yeah. find out, you know, s send an email or something. I don't know. I, I will let you know uh, uh, when I find out when because his next like... show is. Well, this one was thrown together in about five weeks' time. I found out about it uh, the, not this past weekend because that's when the convention was but the weekend before because we had friends that were going to it and we're like hey we're, we're doing their show are you gonna make it uh it's like i don't know maybe hmm. <laughs> but but my daughter and i were able to go out and visit with uh, quite a few friends that were tabling there and um I said now we're focusing our attentions with Casey Creations on Anime Boston and then in June KidsCon up in New Hampshire, so Nice. I was just Actually at... promote way too many people. I don't mind me. <laughs> That's just a habit I've gotten into. It's okay. Um, I don't mind it whatsoever. I just got into um, um, a, a convention just two days ago called Kinabalu up in Augusta. Um, and I was Mario. That's what the mustache is all about. Um, I just haven't bothered to shave it. Or, it's me, Mario. <laughs> it's me, Mario. Oh. And I like I like that character. And the kids love it. I yeah. give them, I, every year I give them co golden coins, and they just love they give them mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mushrooms. All the things you could hand out. Gold coins are probably the preferred. Mushrooms uh, and, and turtle shells, you know. Yeah, or, or, or fire flowers. That could get nasty fast. That could be Raccoon tails. But, it, it was, um, it, it was, was great. great. I had a great time, and I, I hung out with a few friends. Um, I also was able to, um, uh, what was it? Um, who are they? Comic Geeks Unite. Do you ever hang out with them before? Um, I've heard of them, but I don't think I've actually hung out with them. Yeah, I, you know, they're, they, they like, they like geeky things too. Anime's up there, you know? Oh, yeah. Um. Oops, I threw a fireball. So. <laughs> This is why handing out fire flowers would be bad. Yeah, fire fire fireballs. Illustrated earlier. Shiny fire, huh? Yeah. <laughs> fire burns, cleanses everything. Uh, fire bar is by far one of my uh, favorite items in Smash Brothers. It's basically a, a lightsaber made of fireballs. <laughs> So you were 
you were talking about the anime earlier. What was it again? Uh, it was called The Ancient Magus Bride. Um, it's a, currently out on Funimation. They've been uh, simul dubbing it for the last two seasons. I'm not sure how many episodes are going to be in the show because it's a uh, continuing show in Japan and Funimation. Uh, 24 episodes, I've just been told, are what it's scheduled for. The series is phenomenal. Um, it's based around a young old orphan girl, basically, with uh, abilities to see creatures that most people can't see. She ends up going to auction and is bought by a, a mage and uh, becomes his apprentice, and he hopes to have her as his wife. Uh, oh. And I like the story magic. goes from there. There is the characters are awesome. There's a lot of great characters. There's a talking dog named Ruth, uh, and all the names I'm giving are in the English dub. I haven't watched it in Japanese. My wife watches it in Japanese, so she, some of the names have been Americanized from the original, which is common in English dubs as opposed to the subtitles. Right. For purposes of the radio show, I watch most of my stuff English dub but there's a, a few that I've watched in Japanese first like Food Wars I watched in Japanese before they did the English dubbing and I'm still waiting for the English dub of the second season to come out of that and I also heard that there's going to be a third season of Food Wars and I'm excited about that because the storyline has not been finished yet there's nothing more annoying than watch, watching it in a TV show, an anime, a series, and there's so much good stuff, and they leave it wide open for a continuation, and then it never happens. Yeah. Very true. So, hearing that there's a third series, third season coming out for Food Wars, uh, made me really Food happy. Food Wars! Because it's pretty good. And I, I've been meaning to see that one. Yeah, that's the one where people eat food and suddenly they're naked or wearing tutus or things like that to show how good the food is. It's uh, very weird, but it entertaining. It sounds weird. I've heard it's highly stylized in that fashion. And, but, and there's an actual storyline behind it all, which ties it all together. So it's, uh, I would recommend that one to anybody. Of course, I have a long list of animes that I would recommend, but if I <laughs> if I had a top five, I might put Food War. Uh, no, I'd probably put Food Wars in a top ten list. I'd put have a Slayers few up there. Sorry, that's an old school anime. Snow White with the red hair. It would be in my top five. That is one I would. Snow White with want. the red hair. That is an absolutely phenomenal anime, and. Uh, I know uh, I've come on last minute, and I don't know if I'm sidetracking you from no, how you no, no, no. do this dream. I'm curious. You got uh, my yeah. curiosity. It, it, it's it's all good, bud. We're we are uh, largely extemporaneous in nature. Uh, oh, jeez, you're so... using big words now. Now I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I enjoy being able to precisely articulate ridiculous concepts. Uh, okay. Extemporaneous is a word that is somewhere between uh, spontaneous and planned. Okay. So we have a general idea of what we want to talk about when we start to, when we start talking, but but it, it <coughs> beyond that it's it mostly all off the cuff. Okay. So, so you do your thing. You are a guest here. You you uh, have the spotlight. Promote your stuff. Uh, talk about what you want to talk about it's cool we'll jump in we'll jump in where we can okay but that's that's five million questions you gotta yeah, answer and, and he usually does feel free to ask questions anytime because you know I, I, it's not very often that i'm in the guest chair usually i'm in the host chair and um there's only i've been a guest on this show last year and i've been a guest on a couple of paranormal shows on uh KZ Radio and LiveParanormal.com. But other than that, I haven't really sat in a guest chair too many times. Um, although I was a guest on Spooky South Coast Radio once, and that's a AM channel down here in southeastern Massachusetts hmm. that a friend of mine was hosts. And um, I did. We went to school together in eighth grade, and neither of us knew that we both liked the paranormal. And I've been a paranormal investigator on and off for about twenty. Uh, 22, 23 years, somewhere around there. So, about that, by the way, 
Have you done any of it lately, or have you just been focused on conventions and everything? I know you just had a child, but besides that, before before I that, have done did you zero with paranormal in about two years? Wow, that's um, a we long were. Time. My wife and I were a part of a group um, out of Middleborough, but due to the fact that I was working two jobs at the time, uh, about 70 hours a week of work, plus the radio show, I didn't have time to devote to um, doing review and research and things like right. that with the group. Like, they wanted me to and, like, I would have wanted to. So I ended up, my wife and I ended up backing out of the group because we just didn't feel we could be, um, you know, that good of... Uh, you know, the type of people we wanted to be with a group like that uh -huh. and uh shortly at about six months to a year after we backed out the group ended up disbanding anyway so we got out at the right time oh wow uh, well maybe you were the glue that held them together i don't know um no i think we saw that it was starting to fall apart and we backed out at just the just right get time while the getting is good get when the getting's good <laughs> Uh, well, well, we got you know, some really cool evidence. I will say that I'm proud of some of the evidence that we got. Oh, I I dig the whole um, paranormal stuff. I was always into it. I still watch paranormal shows here and there if I can never find any. Um, but, you know, not all of them are... Eh, some of them are alright. Some are, like, pretty good. Some are just people talking about the history of, oh, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So, you know. I don't, you know, I enjoyed Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventurers <laughs> and Most Haunted for what they were. Entertaining shows, but if there's a script writer, I don't trust that anything is authentic. Right. Um, yeah, you gotta take certain things as a grain of salt. Um, How, I'm not saying everything was staged or fake, but I'm gonna, they probably did get some authentic um, evidence, and I, but as a, an investigator myself and you know sci-fi and just using ghost hunters as a reference not and it's nothing against them i actually really enjoyed ghost hunters for a long time i enjoyed ghost hunters ghost hunters international ghost hunters academy um i've gotten to meet a couple of the people from the shows and i loved watching the program but when you have a when you see script writer you know that especially after the first couple of seasons now they need stuff to happen to keep people watching the first couple of seasons of ghost hunters they had episodes where they would go to a house and they would show 15 minutes or half hour from this location and in the re review say we had absolutely nothing happen which happens in probably 80 percent of investigations for paranormal uh investigators the so real teams course. yeah Wow. But when they're starting to do shows where every time, you know, stuff is happening and there's quite a bit of stuff happening, it's like, okay, well now, how many investigations did they get paid to go to? They might right. not have gotten paid from the location, but Sci-Fi paid for them to go to these locations. And they're well-known places, whether it be Rolling Hills, or they're on you know, ships out in California, or they're Waverly Hills Sanitarium in Louisville, or, you know, some of these really... Um, hugely popular haunted locations throughout the u.s that things happen on a regular basis but they have to do multiple days of recording and they have to travel to multiple locations just to fill a season to have stuff because i've been to like lizzie borden's bed and breakfast and i felt nothing saw nothing experienced nothing but i've been to rolling hills and locked in overnight twice and i can give you probably 10 things that happened in the two overnights sometimes activity just doesn't happen, happen. Sometimes it jumps out of the woodwork. It's really a gamble. And sometimes they're just false claims that you go to one, you know? They're oh, the, and they actually, ha Ghost Hunters did have one where they, uh, they went to a place that was supposedly haunted and they debunked just about everything. A face in a mirror was an actual mask behind the mirror. The light bulb was burnt out. They changed the light bulb and got it working for the people. The glasses that were moving in the bar was uh, controlled pneumatically by air. Um, mm. Like they found all sorts of triggers for little things to happen just so people would keep coming thinking it was haunted. Uh. So that's why I, I give them more credit than I give some other shows like uh, Ghost Adventurers. I got to meet um, Aaron. Yeah, it's 
Aaron uh, or something. Nick. I got to meet Nick. Oh, Nick. Nick Roth from, from there because he was doing a book signing. Nice guy. Uh, Zach, I don't like the way he approaches the paranormal investigating, being an antagonist, being an aggressive investigator. Um, I've always go gone in by you show respect because you're dealing with people. In 99% of the cases, you're dealing with somebody at, who at one point was alive, and so you want to treat them with the respect you'd want to be treated with. Mm. And usually I have good... Um, uh, I have good results because it's like, okay, we're just here. We want to know about you, things of that nature. Where he goes in, go, go and hey, you MFs, I want, you know, touch me if you're so big and bad. And he, he like pushes buttons. And then when stuff happens, it's like, oh my God, did you see that? Why did that happen? What happened? Well, if you went into went into somebody's home and started swearing at them and pushing buttons, they're probably going to attack you too. <laughs> yeah. And they definitely provoke. They're definitely provokers. Um, and that's what they want, but that's, that's what their audience wants. That's why they're still doing it. Oh, are they still on the air? I, I haven't I had cable in a while, so I don't, they I don't know if they're still on. might not be anymore, actually. I, I can remember for a while they were doing things, but... I know a lot of people laugh at Zach saying he wears shirts that are like three sizes too small. But, um... <laughs> funny. You didn't hear that from me. I just know people <laughs> who make fun of that. Um... This shirt's way too small. But back on the topic of anime, we were, we got off. Uh, we we're talking about. Sorry, um, this all happens. No white with the red hair. Uh, that is a fantastic storyline, and I've ha actually had the honor of having Josh Greeley, who voices Prince Zen, and um, the voice of Sharyuki, I think it was Brina Palencia, as guests on the show. And both of them said that the, especially Josh Greeley, said this is a show that he would want his kids to watch because Shiryuki is an anim in anime there's a lot of stereotypical characters where uh, you know white hair usually means one thing you see a lot of blondes blue eyes you see blue hair a lot um, pink purple it, and I, I've gotten into like looking at more details and one of the more rarer things to see but has become more popular in like the last couple of years is female characters with red hair and green eyes um, and the weird. only two the only two that I really know of is Sheriyuki from Snow White with the Red Hair and Chise from Ancient Megas Bride and I'm gonna have Chise's voice actress Danny Chambers uh, the English dub voice actress on the show Sunday um, but Sheriyuki is a very independently strong woman. It's a, she, the character is like, I want to rely on myself. I know that I'm kind of at a disadvantage because I have this unique colored hair. It's candy apple red. The prince of the province that I live in wants me because of my hair, but I don't want that. They try to kidnap her. She runs away. She ends up going to a neighboring country where she becomes friends with the prince of that Actually, he was the second prince of that country, and um, ends up trying to get residency for the other country, ends up working at the uh, royal palace um, as an herbalist, because she's into medicine and things of that nature. And you can see where uh, a love story develops between Shariuki and Prince Zen. Mm. Um, Prince Zen wants to try to help her. You know, he want, he offers his status as, you know, nobleman to help try to help her get into working at the palace, and she refuses it because she wants to get in of her own merits, not because somebody helped her. And so it's a good story to show men how to treat women with respect and space, let them be themselves, but still be there to help them out, care for them, nurture them along the way. And it's a great show for young women to watch to show that it's okay to be independent. It's, you know, you don't be afraid to rely on help when you need it, um, but also know that it's okay to be strong and self-sufficient as well. So That's I would cool. highly recommend that to anybody. If you, and I, Nathan, I know you like goofiness. I do. Yes. There's an anime out right now called Pop Team Epic. There's like six episodes out. It's <laughs> simultaneous right now. 
I hear laughter. Do you know this show? Uh, I haven't watched it, but I have seen numerous gift sets on the old Tumblr, and it <laughs> seems whack as hell. I like whack as hell. Yeah. Let me put it to you this way. It, it's like, it's a half hour show, and they split up into two 15 minute segments. They take, they do 15 minutes of animation with one set voice actors. The second 15 minute segment is the same animation, a different set of voice actors for the main characters. Oh, like wow. we've heard, we've heard Greg Ayers voicing these two girl, uh, one of these two girls, Monica Rial, Brittany Karbowski, Brina Palencia. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Jeremy Lee was one of them. I think Josh Greeley might have been involved. Uh, so it's not. I think Todd Haberkorn was in one too, if I can remember correctly. I, I haven't seen the whole list of names who have voiced these two two main girls' characters. I think it's Papuko and Papimi, or Popko and Papimi. Peep me, whatever. Um, I'm getting corrected in the other room about the name because I'm bad about that. But um, no regrets. <laughs> but it, it is completely a half hour of complete and total nonsense with uh, no real. There's no plot to the story. It's kind of like um... it, it's an entire series of uh, filler episodes. And it almost makes Fooly Cooly seem normal. Oh my god! Is it kind of like, um, oh, what is it called? I'm trying to remember? Well, if it makes Fooly Cooly seem normal, then it's probably like, like nothing else on Earth. No, 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 no. My, well, Fooly my Cooly mate is a bro. <laughs> <laughs> my mate is a, um, a, um, is a mermaid, a mermaid is freaking oh, out of this is a mermaid? Yes. My Bride is a Mermaid, is that what you're thinking yes, of? Yes, yes, yes. That actually had a storyline, too. Yes, but it's still Pop like... Team Epic does not have a storyline. When I'm taking... I just remembered the name of it. Excel Saga. There's no real storyline to that. <laughs> oh, Excel Saga. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I could call, put that... I think it's weirder than Excel Saga. I mean, granted, they're not eating dogs, and they don't have one character that talks five million miles an hour <laughs> like Excel does. I, I introduced shot my wife to that show, she said, watched one episode and goes, how the hell is that person talking that fast for Excel? Um, Easily, I guess, I don't know. More like Accelerate Saga, am I right? Uh, oh, Jesus. Lame. <laughs> Grown. <laughs> <laughs> but, Pop Team Epic is just... There's one segment of a show where Popco and Peepa Me are sitting beside each other and people me is a short blonde haired girl popco is uh blue hair taller and people me is like i like long uh strokes on my head and uh people me starts rubbing her rubbing popco's head with her hand and people me's head starts growing um uh, out of the screen comes through another direction and in english it's just in english the female voice actress section just like as it's going through and just being completely goofy uh, when they redo it with uh, male voice actors for the characters uh people me's vo male voice actors like this is where things get long as the head just starts growing and going really weird to it um i really can't <laughs> say a whole lot about this show other than it's completely bizarre and i don't know why i continue to watch it other than the fact that some of it is really entertaining <laughs> I like <being> this <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm recovering from a cold, so I still got a cough. <laughs> but it literally, it's like, what the hell? I watched one episode. I want what the hell am I watching? But <laughs> I, I like couldn't turn away. Thing, it, it's like watching a train wreck, or like you, for a sports fan, you're watching a NASCAR race on a super speedway, and there's like a. 25 car pile up you can't turn away because you want to see if a car goes flying through the air or something and <laughs> they, they tagged all that up into a randomness anime makes it'd be like watching me. a nascar race and a hockey game breaks out or something just doesn't make sense <laughs> oh that would be kind of neat interesting uh, and another thing that we started doing on Animazing Radio since the last time that, I think even since the last time you and I talked, Nathan, at uh, Ben Santos's convention, we started doing anime-specific shows where we would find uh, an anime that we were a big fan of 
and then just right. try to gather two to three, you know, three, four uh, voice actors from that show and promote it. And the first show that we did was based off an anime called New Game. And seeing you playing game right now kind of made me think of this. It's a series about a young girl who graduates high school, and instead of going on to college, she gets a job at a video game company where she's the character designer. And so you get to see some of the behind the scenes things that goes on in the creation of popular RPG video games. Ooh, like Dark Souls. Um. And uh, we were lucky enough to have Megan Shipman, the voice of Aoba Suzukaze, on nice. Brent April, who voiced her best friend uh, Nene, and Michelle Rojas, who voiced um, Nene, Nene, Nene. Sorry. her. Um, I forget the character's name now. That sucks. But she was the prodigy. She was basically uh, Alba's boss in in the series. And the sh like, I watched the first twelve. I watched first season because Funimation was kind of simuled up. The second season, they had to drop the first season real quick. And it just hooked me right in from the beginning, and it was phenomenal for anybody who plays video games. If you want to know a little bit of what goes on behind the scenes, check this show out. And uh, that went so well, it led to uh, working with our friend Anthony Bowling, Funimation voice actor, because he had had the idea of doing a Devil is a Part-Timers uh, panel at a convention, but could never get everybody together. And so for an hour's worth of time, I was able to get Josh Greeley, Kia Ballard, Anthony Bowling, and Felicia Angel, the four main characters from Devil is a Part-Timer, no on way. the show. Uh-uh! Really? Yeah. That show's awesome! I love that so we, so we had Satan, Asiel, nice. Amelia the Hero, and, um, Chiho. No way! That's awesome! And that was our highest listened to show in the history of Animazing Radio. That's amazing. <laughs> it was Animazing. It is. So that was uh, definitely a lot of fun having them on, and I really thank Anthony Bowling for helping to organize that and set that up because it really was an awesome, awesome night. And uh, I know Josh Greeley is going to be at Anime Boston, so we're hoping to be able to see him and have him autograph copy of uh, Devil is a Part-Timer that I have. That would be great. I haven't met him yet, but he's been a guest on the show twice. Well, you know, that's how this, you know, this thing, stuff works, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I met you in Anime I mean, um, what is it? What was it again? Anime. Anime, yeah. And even then, I would have had you on if I didn't, I, if, even if I didn't know you. I mean, if I didn't see you or meet you, you know what I mean? In person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, we felt bad because we want, really wanted to do anime last year. Um, I missed it last year. Oh, partially because Anthony Bowling, our friend, was guest of honor, and we still haven't met him yet. Um, but we weren't able to go because oh, that's quite the, the, trip. the Monday before, my wife gave birth to our daughter. Whoops, oh, you know? I can see why that would be a priority. <laughs> Priorities? And, <laughs> she still would have gone, but some personal things popped up during that week that had us basically mentally, uh, physically she felt good enough to do it, but mentally it just was out of the question to be able to go to anim anime and, and she had even looked at getting a table there. We were wow. all ready to do a table, but unfortunately with the uh, things that popped up, it was like we just, no, there's no way mentally so that she would have so been able to do it. things popped up and a person popped out. Uh, well, even even yeah. with the birth of our daughter, she wanted to do the uh, convention. Wow, that that, that is she, serious dedication. She she had, she had, she had a uh, planned C-section, so things went really smooth. She was out of the hospital um, by like Friday, and uh, we would have been more. I know she would have been more than happy to be like, all right, let's just go home, pack everything up, and head up to Maine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll go up, to, we'll go up there for the weekend a, and do, do the art table. Your lady is a badass. Please extend to her a fist bump from me. 
You get a fist bump from them. They said you are a true badass for still wanting to vend after giving birth. <laughs> for serious. No hey, what's a geek? Always a geek, you know? Right? I, I dig that. I do. And we've already brought our daughter to a uh, convention man. twice. To, to where? To uh, Comic Cons twice so far since she's been born. That's awesome. Good opportunity for baby cosplay? Is that... Uh, that, that, we, that we do. She hasn't cosplayed yet, but we do have uh, uh, some in mind. I know oh, my excellent. wife wants to make some kid cosplays for her and nice. her older sister. Uh, and we've talked about maybe by the end of this year having a cosplay ready for me and my wife and my daughter to uh, do a Soul Eater cosplay huh. where I'm Death the Kid and you have Patty and. Uh, oh, God. Liz to between my wife and my daughter. <laughs> yes. Not no. Yes. Because <laughs> we've been watching Soul Eater lately and um, the I've first been one? It. Yeah, the original Soul Eater. Because the second one, but it's very different. But it's yeah, the same. The, we're watching the first one. We've started a thing where we will go, we will pick an anime and we will alternate back and forth watch the entire season and then the other person chooses the leader was her choice when we come back i think we're gonna uh once we're done with the leader i it's looking like izetta the last witch is going to be uh, our next one to watch oh soul is so good though so I am. good who's your favorite character out of soul leader oh that's a tough one um I'm gonna have to say, um, oh, what's his name? The actual um Scythe there. Soul. Yeah, Soul. I'm gonna have to say Soul. I like Soul a lot. Soul Soul's a good character. I like Maka because she's very pig-headed. I like how right at the beginning, Soul is, is making fun of her figure and she gets pissed about it. I like that she like smacks him upside the head with a book constantly. She can't understand how she's the weakest link at certain points because she's so pig-headed even though she's around other pig-headed people. But every character complements each other so well in that series. They it do. It really is entertaining. How far are you in it? Um, we are, I think, in the 20s. For episodes, I'm not sure. It's we not haven't watched bad. it. So you definitely I know. In about a week. So you definitely know of um. Of I what? can't stand Black Star. Black Star annoys the hell out of me. Black Star. I have to. Oh say. well, his ego is a pain in the ass. Yeah. But um, I think it's Brittany Karbowski who voices Black Star, and she does a tremendous job at bringing out the uh, cockiness of him. Um, uh, he doesn't deserve his weapon. No, he doesn't. Tsubaki is I'm glad uh, way too kind-hearted. Yeah. And Death the Kid is something, I'll tell you. Oh, I, I, I laugh because Death the Kid reminds me of a co-worker of mine. And I've told people at work about this. Because we pick on this kid. He, he's young, but he's intelligent. He's already an ASE master tech. He's gone through and passed ASE tests, I think, like... Well, that's pretty much Jeff the Kid, isn't nine, it? <laughs> it's like nine, ten of them. And I could see my co-worker being the type of person that everything has to be symmetrical. Somebody messes with his toolbox, he gets pissed. Mm. And it's like, I could see him really being Death the Kid, being, this all has to be symmetrical. It's got to be in perfect yeah. symmetry. If, if this wrench isn't in the right location, Grr, it's the end of the world. I don't deserve to live. But his hair! His hair! <laughs> I know you. You bring that up. He he just like goes crazy. Goes nuts. Cause it, it's the only symmetrical thing non about him is his hair. And hats off to Todd Habercorn, who does the voice of Death the Kid. He did a tre tremendous job with Death the Kid. Um, and I know I throw a lot of names out there because a lot of times people know the characters but no, don't know the voice actors. Mm. For a long time, I was one of those people that would fast forward through the opening song shut the anime off before the ending credits because I didn't care. Um, but now I watch shows and you know, a lot of it care. is thanks to the radio show 
uh, that it's like, ooh, you know, I should go back and listen to some of the opening songs to these shows because a lot of them are tremendous. They um, are. They do a then, great job. And then it's thanks to what, thanks to uh, you know, the credits and finding out who voices characters. It's like I like this character. Um, Isetta the Last Witch is a perfect example. The voice of Isetta um, is a young lady named Skylar McIntosh, who we've been very fortunate enough to have Ooh, on the show McIntosh. three times. We've become friends with. Um, she's a talented young voice actress. Doesn't have a ton of main roles or named roles under her belt for Funimation, uh, but she, she did such a good job as Isetta in that show. And that was my introduction to her, that I had to have her on the show as a guest. And we went from there to becoming friends with her. She, uh, last year, did a uh, triathlon or an Ironman competition mm -hmm. and completed it nice. in her first attempt. Wow. Kudos. Uh, and my sister does those Spartan races. They are tough. What, what makes it even more impressive is she told us that she has asthma. Whoa. <coughs> wow. And I and I think she has a couple other um, ailments as well. So, but she got through it, an entire Iron Man, and did it in the allotted time. Wow. That's double impressive. And, you know, hats off. Because there are so many people out there that have stories like hers, but you never hear them. Well, mm -hmm. And I don't, I, don't, I don't put that out there to, you know, Post about a friend of mine who did something tremendous because so many people out there do that. I just throw it out there so people can realize that there are stories out there you don't hear about. And uh, one other thing I got to throw out there because I forgot to do it on my show Sunday night. Up here in the Northeast, we dealt with a lot of crappy weather last week. A lot of areas without power. Hats off to the men and women with the electric companies and cable companies out there working tirelessly long hours to try to restore power to thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. Um, my job was without power from Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon until sometime Sunday. Um, fortunately, at my apartment, we kept po we only lost power for an hour and a half, two hours tops Friday morning. Mm -hmm. But the wind was ridiculous. Um, I know, have friends who, as of Monday, were still without power and were staying in a hotel. So, yeah. it's gonna snow. It really is. It's yeah. coming. Yeah. On top, on top of all that, on top of people still recovering from the nor'easter, we're we're getting uh, uh, another nor'easter. No dump. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, has it hit you guys? Uh, it has not hit us yet. Um, I've heard mixed forecasts, everything from 1 to 3 in our area to 14 plus inches. Yeah, I've heard 9 to 14. But we are south of Boston, so um, it's hit or miss with some of these storms. I, I'm not, I don't worry about it after living in the Syracuse area for seven years. I'm one of the people, I don't worry about snow until you start talking feet, then you have my attention. So, <laughs> it's like 14 inches, uh, I can still go and play frisbee golf. Um, yeah, why not? But, uh, I know down here in southeastern Mass, they don't have the snow removal equipment that they did in Syracuse, so. True, we have pl plenty of snow removal equipment here. Uh, you guys, you guys know what snow plows and stuff are. We have pickup trucks with six and eight foot blades that are doing main road, main roadways. So. Oh wow. It's uh, you know, one of those things where Massachusetts is a little southeastern Mass is a little behind because they don't get a ton of snow typically. But you guys have been snowed on like crazy. Actually, this year hasn't been too, too bad. Really? Oh, no, wait. It was two years ago or something two like year, that. Yeah, two years ago, I felt like I was back in Syracuse because we had... Uh, and it was felt like every Sunday and Tuesday, we got storms that would dump between six inches and two feet. Right. I, I never missed a day of work. 
the one day that was a national, that they declared a state of emergency and people weren't allowed on the road was a Tuesday. So, and that was my normal day off. Didn't they get, so, um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, it's okay. Um, didn't they get, um, uh, no, they didn't get, but didn't Pornhub plow them out? <laughs> Possibly. I remember because they the, sent the, a bunch the, of plows. There was a story about, about uh, Pornhub uh, providing snow plows for people because the municipal snow plow service wasn't cutting it. Uh, I don't remember if that was Boston or New York, but I'm pretty sure it was Boston. I, I, I didn't hear the story about that, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I know some companies that are uh, out there that they want to make a better name for themselves. Uh, because they get a bad rap based on either the name of the corporation or what they offer. So I w it would not surprise me if right. they did. Plus the fact that you say Pornhub plowed somebody out. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that can be taken in so exact, many uh, ways. Word association that they were going for. Like, oh, I'm sure. You know what would make a great headline? Pornhub plowed people Pornhub. out. <laughs> Let's, let's do this. Get the plows. They've also, they've also uh, been uh, staunch supporters of net neutrality, which is which is uh, uh, pretty I'm awesome. I'm so glad, and I'm still dreading when when they actually bring turn it off. They haven't turned it off yet. Yeah, April twenty third. It looks like it's going to be the the D day for net neutrality. Oh, ha, 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 ha. So unless unless some kind of uh, bill passes between now and then, and, and I don't know how likely that is. Uh, Has those white things have been there the whole time? I don't know. They just popped up. They just what? popped up. Okay. I'm, I'm so I'm so lagging. I have barely been even watching the video. I'm just enjoying the conversation. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Hold on. Uh, let me take care of that. This something's not right. And anybody out there, if you're uh, listening to us via any mode that you can enjoy 3.5 Geeks, uh, come over to, to their Twitch channel and watch Nathan die as he's playing this character. <laughs> um, well, Actually, Nathan's been doing a really good job. I think I've only seen him die two or three times, and that's probably a lot better than I could do at whatever game this is, because I have no clue. Dark that's Souls. Dark, Dark Souls. And, you know, basically the point is to die a lot. You know, but, but dying is how you get good Oh yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I, I'm more into, I, like I play, I, now a game that I play that I die a lot, um, is Grand Theft Auto V. Oh yeah, I you die a ton of times. And, ton of times. I, I die that. on purpose. I try to find creative ways to die. That's always fun. I'm so serious. I, I, think, I think one of the funnest, funniest ways was I was, be, I was in a, uh, city bus and I, from the game is still a city bus you get, get the cops on you and you try to run from them and I pushed the car into the side of a bridge and the car got airborne hit one of the pillars of the bridge and blew up which then blew up the bus at killing me and blew up the three police cars behind me so I, I that was quite entertaining I, I don't do the GTA live um, partially because I don't have the PlayStation Network and I don't have time to do stuff like that. I just play for fun when I, you know, you have a bad day at work, you want to take some stress or frustrations out, you pop in GTA 5 and just randomly kill innocent people. Um, and then you feel better because you pretend it's the people that pissed you off during the day or week or whatever. And uh, you go on your merry way and it's a harmless stress relief. You just don't, you just have to be smart enough, which I think, and I emphasize, you have to be smart enough to know that this is a video game. You don't bring it to reality. Um, I worry about some of the younger generation not being that smart. Um. You never know. In this day of age, you never know. Okay, okay, yes, this is the generation that gave us, you know, uh, the Tide Pod diet. But yes. Do, that, do, keep, do keep in mind uh, that... Um, but that got overinflamed by the freaking media. Go, going going back through history, you have all sorts of ridiculous friends. Oh yeah. Pet rocks. What the hell kind of a scam was that? A big good one. Uh, that was a good one because they were pets you never needed to feed. You didn't have to take them for a walk. Yeah. You knew where they were at all times. They were causing trouble. They were an analog Tamagotchi. But um, 
<laughs> I mean, that, that, that eventually led to like Neo pets or yeah. like the, the, the simul pets that you would have. You have the little pet on, on a little video game that you have to feed and walk. And if you. I remember it, having a Tamagotchi. Die. Yeah. And then they had the yeah. like the, the kind of evil kind. I forget what they were called. They were weird monsters. Furbies? No, those were. Furbies? Those are those are just evil straight up, yo. Yeah, they're definitely evil. Yeah, we we set we set a Furby on fire at my work when, uh, a few years ago because we had somebody who worked when it was done. <laughs> we love you. No, you don't. Go away. <laughs> And one of those games that, or one of those toys that was a big hit, it was one of those Christmas time toys that everybody was was big on. That Tickle Me Elmo crap. Oh God. That was the best stress relief toy I think I ever saw. And I was working for Walmart at the time, because after the store closed, you could pick one of those things up and punch it, and it would start laughing, saying "hee hee, that tickles," which would piss you off even more. So by the time you were done, you were exhausted from beating the absolute crap out of this thing, and it's still laughing. But you felt so much better after beating the ever loving hell out of it. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to like swear because I don't know if that's allowed or not. That's but. okay. We're allowed to swear. Yeah, 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 dude. You can fucking swear. It's cool. All right, because I don't swear on my show. It's oh, a enjoy. it's a 18 plus when they enter. They they have to yeah. agree to the 18 plus. So I okay. try not to make a habit of it, but it slips out anyway when I get you know super okay. exuberant. So uh, yeah, we. Yeah. And Amazing yeah. Radio, we try to keep uh, family friendly because yeah. we know there are people of all ages that enjoy anime and we and that go to conventions. So we like to focus our guests on people that you can find at the conventions, whether it be anime or Comic Con or whatever. Uh, right. So I try to keep it clean. We do have the people who slip up, and I have one friend who's a cosplayer that we know when she's a guest on the show, we make it rated R because she could say anything. <laughs> and she is one of the most wonderful people we've ever met. She's a sweetheart. She ha Life has dealt her a really crappy hand between health issues and oh. last year she her apartment was flooded. She ended up getting um, somebody she had a restraining order on, ended up being in her apartment building as a tenant, um, and more and more crap just got dumped on this poor girl. That sounds horrible. Yikes. So we've been, uh, you know, we, we're honored that she's been a friend of ours for quite a few years she's been a guest on the show a few times and the craziness that she says and the randomness that she spouts is how she deals with life and you know I, hats off to her for trying to stay positive through all the crap that life has handed her and her um but uh like I said, for the most part, though, we do try to keep it kid-friendly, although we do have those times when we have a guest that on that will go into a TMA um, I subject. I got fucking Fox! <laughs> what, what, what? Whoa, dude! Sorry, yeah. sorry, got out of control there. Keep it TVY7, buddy. <laughs> we did have a guest on, a talented voice actress, and I won't say who, um, but you can go back and listen to the archives. Uh... Who got went to the TMI area when she talked about um, her time of the month for the last 30 minutes of the interview that we had, and I was oh. left speechless for about 20 minutes of oh. the segment. Thank God I had a wonderful co-host in Gavin Goska from Home Circle Media, and uh, he was able to get us back on track because I had no idea what to say. Wow! <laughs> and You're this like, is an ah. actress that I, this is an actress I admire. I love a lot of her work. She does some of my favorite characters, and she has iconic characters in animes that if I said the name of the of the character, they would know exactly who it was. So that's why I'm not saying the name of the character either. Uh. Discretion, huh? Just, just come over to Animazing Radio, go through our archives on Blog Talk Radio, and uh, listen to every single one until you can figure out which one I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah. That sounds like a fun scavenger hunt. Oh yeah. That's your scavenger hunt if you ever watch this video or are yes, that, that, listening yeah. right now. Yeah, that's your homework. You know, and, and I'll even, I'll even, I'll even make it uh, good for li your listeners if they want to go through and find out exactly what the voice actor's name is that I'm talking about, and you want to message me through our Facebook page. 
Uh -huh. I will send you a prize pack. <laughs> nice. The Marvel no prize. Yeah. Oh uh, no, no. I have. Thanks to Home Circle Media, I have an. I have prize packs right. I can send out. That's awesome. That's amazing. I like to and send out prize packs. No, so this is an actual. This is real. If you message me through our. Facebook page forward slash Animazing Radio. You fo you like our page, you follow us, you listen to the shows on Blog Talk, and you message me. The first person that can message me, uh, but you have to say you heard it here on 3.5 Geeks. Or ah, because there you I want to know that it was a listener of 3.5 Geeks, not somebody that just kind of tuned in and uh, whatnot. But I will get I a price pack together for you and send it out. I generally tune us out. No, <laughs> I'm only half listening. <laughs> He's a half but, listener. What? What? Exactly. But we, uh, uh and uh, another thing that we're doing over at Animazing Radio, and this is going to be Anime Boston related, but not this year. Um, we have a little project that we've been working on for about two years now. Up at Animain, uh, when Tia Ballard was a guest, I won a uh, fairy tale DVD from nice. their charity auction and it was it was uh, volume three so we uh, won that and I decided at that point that I wanted to do my own little scavenger hunt and get as many autographs on this DVD as I could oh and then I was gonna donate it to another anime convention's charity auction. So not only did I give money to a charity auction, I will help raise money from the show for a charity auction. Nice. And we felt, after talking with my wife, that the best place to probably do that would be to uh, donate it to Anime Boston. Um, probably 2019 is when we're looking at donating it to them. Uh, with as many signatures on there as we could physically get and I've been keeping track of who has signed it what convention we were at so if there's ever a question you can look back and say okay was Monica Real at Anime Boston this year yes was Michaela Krantz at ChaseCon on this year yes so there is there is legitimate track record so you know all these signatures are authentic um, and we have autographs on there from like I said Michaela Krantz uh, Jamie Markey, Monica Rial, uh, Jade Saxton, who is Carla, uh, from the series. We have currently 10 signatures on there, and I'm working on more. Wow. And it's all it's amazing. inside case. So that's, uh, you know, because being a, when you're in the media like we are, and, you know, whether you're a podcaster, a streamer, whatnot, you want to help others. You do it because you love what you do, but you also know that you have a platform where you can try to help people do good things, and it makes, A, it makes you feel good, and B, it makes you look good. Huh. It's true. Uh, I do it more so because it makes me feel good. I like being a part. I like helping people. I like promoting people. Uh, and... Knowing that we're we are doing something that is kind of fun for us to gather all these signatures, and I've had I've even had the voice actor say, you know, you could have just sent that to Funimation; they would have gotten as many as they could and sent it back. And I told them, I said, yeah, but it wouldn't be as much fun as getting a chance to meet all of you. That's true. Yeah, you know, and getting to meet Jade Saxon, who I'm a big fan of. Austin Tyndall has signed it. Uh, we're actually going to have Austin on next Sunday, Feb uh, March 18th as a guest on the show. His first time with us on air. Got to meet him at Kineticon last year. Um, awesome guy. And one thing I can say, as an anime fan, and you, when you think about actors, you think about like Hollywood, stuff like that, and you hear all the horror, horror stories of how this actor, it, I got to meet them, and they're just a complete and total asshole, and you hear all the horror stories every voice actor i've had the honor to meet to chat with have as a guest on the show chat with on facebook or any other social media have been nothing but the most wonderful of people that i've ever talked to they support each other when it comes to roles it's like oh yeah i didn't i didn't get to voice this character i tried for it, but i think so and so did 10 times better of a job than i could have done which 
in Hollywood you don't hear that. You hear, oh, I I can't believe that guy got it. I could have done that tw twice as good as him. And, you know, you, egos get in the way, and in voice acting, there's no egos, and it's one of the greatest things that I've found. Oh, ego. That, 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 that is a, that is fantastic. You know, getting to meet your hero should be a uh, a glorious experience, not a uh, an awkward story to tell at a party. You know. Oh yeah. Oh, and, and I'm, I'm glad it's gone so well for you. It, it had, and, and I laugh because anybody that would have known me in high school would not believe that I do radio now. <laughs> I, I put it out there because in high school I was quiet. I kept to myself. I didn't have many friends. I, I was one of those middle of the road people where you weren't picked on a ton, but you weren't popular. You were just kind of there. And that was my existence through four years of high school. Interesting. So I didn't talk to many people. I didn't hang out with many people. Uh, I hung, I had people that I'd hung out with. Some um, could consider on the popular side. Some I could consider on the bully side. Uh, but I basically kept to myself and you know social things. I was not a big part of. I didn't go to a senior prom or a junior prom. Uh, I didn't do many functions or things of that nature. I hated school so much. I was like, why do I want to deal with these people when I don't have to? Um, and now you have to deal with people all the time. But, you know, eventually I learned that to make make myself better and to grow as a person, I need to get myself out of comfort zones and challenge myself. And that's one of the reasons I got into internet radio and podcasting. And, uh... Internet radio. It's amazing where things have taken since I started. I'm sure you guys can say the same thing that you've been able to have some experiences that if it wasn't for 3.5 geeks, you might not have been able to have. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, we, we got to meet Jim Cummings uh, at uh, Bangor Toy and Comic Con. That was amazing. Um, I ran into Nichelle Nichols outside of the bathroom. That was amazing. I was just like, oh, hey, how's it going? She's like, oh, great. That was the extent of our conversation. I met a legend. That's um, pretty awesome. The sixth doctor, Colin Baker, uh, was there at, uh, at, uh, the same year. Um, and while I didn't speak with him directly, I got to kind of hang out with my friend Kim uh, when 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 she you know gave him a picture to sign and and, and got her autograph, got got his autograph and stuff like that. So um, that that is the uh, only uh, living Doctor of Doctor Who whose presence I've been in uh, since I saw David Tennant do Shakespeare back in the night. <laughs> wow! Yeah, that's and, cool. and he wasn't David Tennant then. He was David McDonald, and and uh, uh, this this was long before, um, this was long before uh, um, he, the the new Doctor Who series was a twinkle in RTD's oh. eye. But I got to meet Colin Baker, for frick's sake! Like actually exchange words with him. Was, that's awesome. I said hi. I've done that without three point five geeks. So yeah. Um, what I. There's a couple of things I did, you know, when Matt was wasn't with us. At, well, he was with us, but he wasn't at the convention. I was able to meet um, Jake the Snake. I thought that was pretty cool. That uh, is he's a good cool. guy. Um, um, that had the, me jealous because that was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a brilliant guy. Um, he's definitely um, done rehab and all that, which is good because you know he was going down a dark path after a while. Um, and his handler, who was a pretty cool, cool guy, um, he had his own personal handler, which was awesome. Um, I got to meet the guy that played Candyman, um, I forget what his name is, um, um, but I got to meet, um, uh, um, who plays Mini-Me? Ah, I'm trying to remember, I'm bad with his name. What was that? Burn, Burn Troyer. I got to meet Vern Troy. I got to shake his hand, got his picture and everything. That was really cool. Um, 
I also got to meet um, oh, one of the actors from oh, a thousand House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, the the Rob Zombie movie. Yeah. So I got to meet one of them. That was pretty awesome. Um, cool. It was at the horror con. I met all these awesome actors. Um, and I kind of say Jake the Snake is kind of an actor at the same time. A wrestler. Um, he's both. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's a portrayal aspect to the, yeah, the, the kayfabe. Right. And it was nice meeting Jim Cummings. Um, um, oh, yeah. I met... I talked to... Um, What's her name from St um, the original Star Trek? Um, Michelle Nichols. Yeah, Michelle Nichols. I got to talk to yeah, her. Lieutenant Mayota Uhura. That was amazing. Um, right. God, there's so many people I get to talk to. I get to meet I, um, that voice actor when I went to um, Anime. Um, what's her name? Who played in um, played as um, Casca and um, Berserk and. Um, the, oh, what was that one where the guy transforms into her armor? It's kind of weird. Um, well, that's Soul Eater. Oh, no, Soul Eater, they transform into the weapon. Oh, this is the armor. You were there, there. You recorded it. I'm trying to think of... Because I've been to three animes, and the first year I went, Tia Ballard was the guest. Second year I went, uh, Monica Rial was the female guest. Third year I went was Terry Doty as the female guest. It was me and you, so... If I, had a, I was Mario at the time, and I got a picture of it. I, I'd have to go back and... Actually, you know what? Let me see if I can I'm get... I'm bad with this. I apologize. Look. Name for never my forte. So, let, let's see if they have a history of uh, on their page, Animain. Uh, see if they have a history of guests on their page. I think they do. Um, Hall of Fame. Uh, no, we didn't make it in 2017. Was it 2016 that we were both there? Yeah. Okay, we would have been Terry Doty. Yeah, and she's put, she's done a lot of roles too. So she's an amazing yes. actress. Oh, she she has a book out. I didn't know that. Yeah, we were, uh, I was actually really surprised when she messaged me on Facebook out of the blue. was like, hey, I have a book coming out. I was wondering if um, I sent you an e-copy, if you would read it and do a review. And I said, sure, but I'm, you know, I'm not much of a reader. So I had it for about three months and I finished it four hours before we had her as a guest on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but the book was actually really good. It didn't take me that long to read it because... I'm not much of a reader. It really took me that long to read it because I worked 65, 70 hours a week. Right. You work a lot. I and I really appreciate joining us on this, um, on the show. Um, oh, I know that we've been trying to figure out when I could come on and hang out with you guys again for a while. And you at least got to do it once a year with us. Come on. <laughs> oh, I'd, I'd be more than honored to do it more uh, when we can and when things work out. And I'd know that uh, we want to have you guys back on with us. Of course. Um, once I can figure out, uh, I have a few emails I got to send out for guests of people that I talk to at NECC, and I need to figure out um, a couple of things on the show, but I am starting to book for April and May. Um, we're, try we're trying to find some really good guests for April 8th, which is our four-year anniversary show and Anime Boston Review Show. Nice. I did put a request out to Caitlin French, uh, Sentai Filmworks voice actress, who is going to be at Anime Boston. She said she has to check her schedule, and she will get back to me on whether or not she, she'll be able to be a guest on the 8th. Uh, which, if that's the case, I could do both with a voice actor and get a voice actor's uh, point of view from a convention as opposed to just an attendee slash vendor. That's awesome. And um, I, I've also thrown the message out to a couple other voice actors to uh, see if they're available to come on the show. Um, it is our typical two-hour uh, live show. Um, we were honored for the first couple of years to have Tia Ballard join us on our anniversary shows because she was our first ever guest, but um, her schedule has increased to the point that she hasn't been able to join us 
since our two year anniversary, other than the uh, Devil's a Part Timer special. We were able to actually interview Chief Oak for a short time before her That's cell phone. That's really cool. Out. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's really neat to sit back and think about. Like, it amazes me when I realize that we're going into year four of this show. <laughs> and I didn't think I would get past, like, one or two. And it took me six months of people that I were friends with. I was co-hosting on another show on a different network. And it was like, it took about six months of them convincing me to do my own show that was anime and pop culture based because I didn't really have the confidence to do it. I didn't think that I would be able to do it. And here we are getting ready to celebrate year four of Animazing Radio and oh, wow. our third year on Blog Talk because we had about a year and a half with Hazy Radio and then when things kind of went south there and it really what happened was I didn't have the money to buy the broadcaster and I couldn't find a reliable producer um, that would be able to be there every week I had many wonderful people who helped us out for as long as they could but uh, everybody's got lives and stuff so we decided to take a month off figure out what we wanted to do and then we jumped ship and then uh, February two years ago um, February 7th of like 2016 I think it was we started uh, over on blog talk radio and since then we're probably uh, between the two networks I think we are nearing 200 episodes if we haven't hit that yet oh, well I mean God we're, I don't know we're about 100 and something episodes <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, we're, we, um, but like we talked about, we're, we're coming up on our uh, uh, our four-year anniversary, and uh, we, we've been fairly consistent throughout that time. But you know, we've also had a couple of hiatuses. We like, had to. Yeah, like uh, Nate and I both moved house one right after the other. Uh, like right when the dust was settling on Nate's move, all of a sudden I got a letter from my landlord saying he was turning our apartments into condos and we should get out. The so. it, 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 it was Maine being Maine like, like, at this yeah. point because yes, unfortunately... The area, at least. Yeah, because the, 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 the rent in the Portland area just keeps going up. And it's just crazy, man. It was, it was unfortunate. Um, that, that everyone, I know a lot of people that are in Portland alone are not be able to live where they, where they are anymore. Yeah. And they have to move. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm shooting messages out to some friends on Facebook that are, uh, loyal supporters of AZR and letting them know I'm on with you guys and sending links out. That so. would be great if we can have some um, other people, because I always like to get in chat involved. I just haven't been I'm fortunate. I think, I think something happened during our hiatus, I'm going to be honest, where um, I think people thought we were gone because we kind of changed formats and a bit and we kind of changed, the, I changed a few things around to, to make, make it yeah. work better for us. Yeah, um, we, yeah, we went from being a primarily audio podcast to being uh, Twitch with voiceover. And uh, I, I, I don't think uh, some of our, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think our one listener made the jump. <laughs> um, yeah, we like to call our listeners the listener. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we assume there's at least one of you out there, but I'm not going to count on more than that. So we just refer to our listeners as singular. It's just, well, listener. There's always one keeping us going. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I get people talking about us here and there. So, we're not, we're not gone. No, we're not. No. Uh, I, I did suggest to me at one point uh, that because uh, 420 is our anniversary. Um, we and, smoke a blunt? Uh, no, can... I was gonna say, you're gonna do it high? I mean, it is legal in Maine now, but it's not my scene, so... Uh, I think we're up bro. to five viewers now. I know! Yeah. Oh, that, that's, that's cool. 
that's that's definitely more than we were. Hello um, to everybody out there. If you're watching us, come into the chat because we are watching the chat. I know I'm in here and I know Nathan can see it. Oh yeah. I think, I think Mike can see it too. Did you just call Matt Mike? Matt, I, I I'm horrible with names, so I apologize, Matt. It's, it's all good. <laughs> I'll, I I will respond to any uh, saint named with M. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because my name gets mixed up so much. But, I, um, yeah, it's cool. Mike, Matthew, Matthias, Malachi, you know, any any Bible name. It's cool. I, I'm, I'm going to write it down right now. that Because Nathan, I have met multiple times, so it was easy to know it was Nathan. But right. I know I've, we've talked before, but until I can meet you and really put a face with the name and things like okay. that, I can remember faces, names I suck at. I get it, dude. I ain't mad. Uh, my... my um, I'm always introducing myself to my wife's hairdressing clients, not realizing I've met them before. So, even with the even with the face and the name, I still get it wrong. Um, yeah, in my defense, she's very busy. Oh yeah. Now, Matt, you you seem like you enjoy a lot of animes. Um, yes. Uh, I uh, my my. Uh, my library is not as diverse as yours, but I, it would, I, I, that, that would take some serious doing. Um, well, I, 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 I don't own all these animes that I promote and talk about. A lot of them I watch uh, simultaneously because we yeah. subscribe to Funimation.com. Um, well, yeah. there you um, go. I have, I, a ver I have a Verve account, if that helps. Uh, <laughs> I got some crunchy roll happening. Um, no, um, my, my, bi my big guns anime-wise are, uh, Hayao Miyazaki, uh, okay. uh, Ghost in the Shell, and occasionally Appleseed, because that has a similar provenance. Um, Makes and, sense. uh, Cowboy Bebop. <coughs> um, <coughs> oh, everyone loves Cowboy Bebop. Well, most people do. <laughs> I, I have a cursory familiarity with Full Metal Alchemist, but not, uh, an in-depth knowledge thereof. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, enjoy the concept of Naruto, but I've never been able to get into the series itself. Um, it's like me with, uh, Attack on Titan. I can understand why it's so popular, but I couldn't get past the first episode. Right, yeah. The, <laughs> the, the, for some reason, no offense intended to anyone, uh, that you may have, have, may or may not have met in the course of your travels, uh, but the voice actors for Naruto, the like some, you know, like original English dub or whatever that I saw, were just so nails on a chalkboard to, 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 to my to my senses or what have you that I actually couldn't keep watching. Um, I, I have fully intended to go back and watch at least some of it, just subtitled. That way I don't necessarily have to encounter that aspect again, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, I don't mean to laugh at that comment, but there is an anime out that my wife would say the same thing in um, Negima. She loves, oh, Negima. The, she loves a lot of the work that Greg Ayers does. Yeah. But she said that Neg Professor Negi the high-pitched screech Danish accent voice that Greg Ayers does for Negi is the only reason she won't give it a chance in English. Oh yikes! Yeah, she doesn't want she doesn't want to hear that one again. I enjoyed the series. I thought it was really funny. There was a lot of there was a lot of uh, quirks in there, and I didn't think it was all that bad. I I enjoyed. I actually watched both Negimas, the original Negima, and then the Negima Negi Master, which is. Uh, and it's, and it's not season one, season two. It's two separate stories with the same characters, which was interesting. It is interesting. Um, sort of an anthology bit. And, and uh, then there was another show that uh, Monster Masume. There was uh, one character. Like we loved the series in Japanese when they English dubbed it. There was one character that we really enjoyed in Japanese, but the English voice actress who. We admire her. We love a lot of her work, but she ruined that show in English for us. I, I still haven't gone back, and I haven't finished it in English, and I loved it in Japanese. Uh, I, back when uh, Toonami was originally a thing, uh, yeah. one, one of the main things I watched that was Gundam Wing. Oh, Gundam Wing is awesome. 
do love that show. Love that series. Uh, I haven't been able to get into any of the other Gundam series, but Gundam is my jam. Uh, like, I, I would be uh, chatting with people on AOL, and I'm like, okay, it's time, I'll be back in half an hour. <sighs> Sign off, go downstairs, head back upstairs afterwards, and go, oh, my back! Oh, yeah, that was the show. Uh, but there was this one particular military character who had such a really annoying voice. You know, he was supposed to be like this military commander, commander, and he sounded like, you know, like a wacky racist bad guy, and and just absolutely frustrating. But I actually like whooped when he was like backstabbed by a bad guy and like blown up because it meant I didn't have to hear his voice anymore. He's done. He's done. Oh my god. Ding dong, the witch is dead. <laughs> <laughs> the gods of Gundam have heard my prayer. Thank you, Hero Yui. Oh, no. Hero Yui killed him? No, no, I don't know. I just, if, if you were gonna pick a messiah out of the characters of Gundam, Hero Yui. Yeah. yeah, so. And there's a, the last anime related special that I did on AVR was for the anime Keijo. And I don't know if you guys have seen or heard of Keijo. I have not. Keijo is an a anime based around a sport where women compete on what's called a land. It's a floating platform in the middle of a pool. And they have to knock each other into the water using only their boobs and their butt. Oh, like in um, um, Dead or Alive. Uh, I have not seen that. So Dead yeah, Live it's a, it's Volleyball. It's a video game series. Yeah. Dead Live right. Volleyball has a um, um, a competition where you have to butt bump each other on these platforms. Yeah. But they, and they basically the storyline is about these group of girls who go to one of two Keijo training schools to try to become professional, and you get to see uh, them try to train different ways like they do butt figure eights they have butt races the main character has to try to <laughs> sorry the main character has to pull turnips out of the ground using only her hips <laughs> now that sounds difficult and we were honored for when we did this special uh, michelle rojas had to cancel for personal reasons which we understood and uh you know, definitely no hard oh, feelings there. She had actually are. joined us the weekend before as our um, solo guest. So I have her having to cancel for personal I'm reasons. There's totally understandable what the reasons were. And right. we were honored enough to have Marissa Lenti, Skylar McIntosh, Felicia Angel, and Alex Moore join us. And Alex Moore was the late addition to the uh, guests, but I couldn't see doing a Keijo special and not have the voice actress of my favorite character from the show on. <laughs> and she wasn't even a main character. She started out as like a bad guy, turned into a good guy as the storyline progressed. Huh. But the, the this show itself was, you know, it's fan service but doesn't go overboard. Uh -huh. um, very high on the sports aspect of things. You can see and get, if you're a sports fan like I am, and you can look beyond the fan service of girls in bathing suits running around trying to, you know, battle mm -hmm. each other using their boobs and butts and coming up with names like the vacuum butt cannon, titty hypnosis. <laughs> um, what actual crap? The, the nipple hip flip. Uh, You're gonna kill me. <laughs> these, these are these are actual names in this show. I swear to you, watch it. It is tremendous. Um, you, 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 and, and like I was talking to these talented voice actresses, and they're like, "We've never really done much like this before." Um, <laughs> the translations were actually how they translated from Japanese, and uh, you know, coming up with the names of these moves, it's like the butt cluster. <laughs> well, and they they categorized oh, the girls in three groups. You had the outfighter, the in fighter, and Goodbye. and the I forget what the other one was. The outfighter was, uh, the infighter was somebody who had a lot of speed, uh, and Felicia and Jill and Alex Moore's characters, Felicia and Jill voice uh, Sayaka, Miata, and uh, Alex voice Rin uh, Rukudo, they were both 
in fighters, they were both very fast with their butt. Like, they worked on trying to strike ten times with their butt in, like, a second. Wow. That's impressive. And, uh, so, you know, anime logic. I don't think people could do that, but th this anime bombed in Japan. It was so badly looked upon by, by the Japanese that the writer of the manga and the creator of the series did a public apology and vowed to never continue the series. Every other country loved it. It was embraced wholeheartedly in the U.S. Uh, Portugal is trying to turn it into an actual sport. Well, that's very there are women who are trying to find, you know, get like protective gear for boobs and butts and trying to bring Keijo to life in actual competition. And I've seen multiple news reports about this. Uh, I would watch this. My wife would watch this. I would watch it. I would. I'm a sucker. Oh my gosh. I'm still so, like, what the frick? So definitely one worth to watch, um, and uh, apparently like like Keijo and New Game, two of the three specials I did, I come to find out were both produced by Clifford Chapman, who we put an invite out and tried to see if we could get him as uh, mm -hmm. a guest on the show to talk about the series, and mm -hmm. um, he is an extremely busy individual <coughs> producing I think like three or four shows at Funimation every season that they simuled up. So this poor bastard never sleeps, apparently, huh. and uh, I have nothing but the utmost respect for everybody in the anime world. And that goes from the voice actors who get most of the credit for what you see, to the producers who get some of the credit for the hard work, and all the way down the line to the translators, the script adapters, the ADR writers, the edit people, all the people you never get to see at conventions or hear from. I have nothing but the most utmost respect for all of you guys and you know every time I have voice actors on I want to make it a point to let them know I appreciate the work that goes on behind the scenes not just you know as a fan of a video game an anime a TV show mm -hmm. you know even an animated show like movies from like Pixar or Disney or whatever the people who voice the characters and bring them to life are who the fans remember very the cool. average, the average fan oh, doesn't give a crap about how many thousands of hours went into making that Snow White, funny. or making Cars, or making Garak, Rosario Kingway, Vampire, or Naruto Fairy Tale. You know, you, you name it. What what went into creating the voices on Final Fantasy series, or Grand Theft Auto, or Halo? Or, you, know, you, you don't think about what goes on behind to produce these games you just know the voices you're hearing mm. and I always try to make it a point to bring light on the people behind the scenes because you know they deserve credit too they're working just as hard and in most cases they're working harder than the voice actors who have to go into a booth for a few hours yell scream be goofy say whatever the lines are go off and continue <coughs> on with their day and <coughs> Not right. that voice actors, and I don't want to make it seem like I'm saying voice actors have the easy job or mm -hmm. what they do is easy because it's right. not. No. I couldn't go into a booth, I can tell you right now, I couldn't go into a voice acting booth and do what J. Michael Tatum does. There's no way possible. I would love to attempt it, but I'm not an actor. I have no acting experience. Hell, most people tell you I have no radio experience, even though I've been doing this for 15 years, for like 10 years. I don't have radio experience. I don't know what I'm doing. I learn as I go. I'm self-taught. I'm very self-taught. All the videos I've edited, oh. all the um, audio I've edited, that's all self-taught. Oh. I don't even edit my, edit my audio usually. I ha I think I've had one or two episodes that I had to edit, and New Game is one of them, because we forgot that after the show goes off the air, if I don't switch the uh, microphones to... Uh -huh. uh, the third room to where we can talk because there's live on the air there's muted mics and then there's like the green room if i don't switch the mics to the green room it's going to continue to re record our conversation so anybody that goes back and listens to the, the <laughs> recorded are going to hear the bonus after off the ear talk <laughs> and so i was asked i was asked because we started talking about some things that 
couldn't be aired, they asked me to take that down and cut the ending off, which I did. It was then promoted by uh, Clifford Chapman, and of course, uh, everybody who was associated with the show that was on the uh, An Amazing Radio special Absolutely. promoted the crap out of it, and I didn't know Clifford was going to promote it. I have him on Twitter, and yeah, next thing I know, I see uh, I was tagged in something by Clifford Chapman. I'm like, what the hell? He just promoted my show, and that boosted it up for the week. Um, That's always and, great, actually. So that, that like, humbles me, because it's like people I look up to are enjoying what I do, right. and I by no means look at myself as a celebrity, but when I go to a convention and friends of mine who are more well known than I am for whatever reason announce, you know, the show or something like that, and I see people in the audience, and this actually happened at AAC a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend De uh, Devira Kai, who works with Big Bucks Entertainment, um, was doing a press your luck game show with the big board, you know, no whammy, no whammy, okay. stop all. They go above and beyond. It's they put a, a terrific uh, event. They also do nice. uh, Super Millionaire um, at oh, a lot of man. conventions. And with the whammy, you can he would pull nice. people out of the crowd while the big board was okay. going, and he would have the opportunity to win a candy bar. You know, nothing huge, but it's still neat to get pulled up, and you're going off the luck of the contestant, hoping that they don't hit a whammy. If they hit a prize, you win the candy bar. If they hit a whammy, wow. you go back to your seat empty-handed. Mm -hmm. You're making and uh, bit, so I you might like to uh, he had two rounds, two different. He had two different games, and I was the last person he selected. I guess he, he probably had this planned out, and uh, he pulled me up in front of everybody. He's like, "This last person I pulled up, I have a reason I brought him up here. He's a good friend of ours. He hosted an internet radio show called An Amazing Radio, and I'm looking at the crowd, and this is the largest auditorium that AAC has. It's the main stage." three quarters full and there's a young girl in the front that turns to her friend and goes oh my god I listened to that show yeah. and I heard her tell her friend that and with blog talk radio much like twitch you have a live chat room yep. you can't really tell how many people are listening to you through apps or things of that nature until after everything's all said and done so if you don't come into the chat room and interact with us we have no idea who's out there tuning in, who's watching us, who's listening to us, whatnot. All I get and is a little number. That says... you, get the, you get the little number and nobody that says anything in there. It's very easy. If you come in and, and you join us at Twitch, there's a little area that's beside the screen. You can just type a message and you hit enter. And it pops up and we can see what you say. Hey, Don't be afraid. You said hi. <laughs> yeah. And, I, I, and, and normally, when I have, um, when we have this thing called, um, um, um Steam Labs, and what, what it, it does, does is, is, um, it does little fancy things, like, oh, if someone subscribes, it shows it up in the corner. And that gets recorded, and if someone talks, like, if you said hello, on the bottom, it'll show it in the ch it'll show chat. chat. But unfortunately, it has a malfunction, unfortunately. So you can't see any of it. But nonetheless, usually it comes back on, so you would be literally, in our channel, be part of the video, which is kind of cool. Because that, that goes, goes right up on YouTube afterwards, so. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. And uh, I do want to throw out, anybody that is interested and wants to tune in to An Amazing Radio, we are live on Sunday night at Blog Talk Radio, so you can go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash anime. Zing, that's A N I M E Z I N G radio. And, uh, you know, subscribe to us there. F subscribe, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can find us on YouTube. We have bonus content on YouTube that you will not see or hear on the show. We have exclusive interviews from conventions with, with, with people, uh, uh, different guests, different attendees at shows like Animane. We have a panel that Carrie Karanen did. We have that up on our site. Um, Vermont Comic Con, we were in a Naomi Grossman panel and we were able to record that. That's up in a three-part segment. Um, Naomi Grossman from... Uh, oh, why can't I remember the name of that TV show that she was in? Uh, American Horror Story, thank you. Man. you can't, I don't expect you to remember everything. 
Uh, American Horror Story. That's why oh. I have a very smart wife. Uh, she was Pepper in American Horror Story. So we had a, we were able to record a panel that she put on at Vermont Comic Con, and that's nice. up on our YouTube channel. Uh, we have an interview with one of the voice actresses from Steven Universe up on there. Oh, Plus my wife loves Steven Universe. Uh, Sorry. Go oh. I was gonna say we have bonus content with interviews of, from cosplayers that were at AAC uh, Katsukon last year. No, we didn't really get much from Anime Boston last year because my wife was pregnant uh, first trimester at the time of Anime Boston right. and we were vending. So imagine first trimester morning sickness, working 12-hour days at Artist Alley. <laughs> We were exhausted and didn't really do much of anything. I imagine. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, but it was a uh, so much good bonus stuff that you can find on there. Uh, we have an interview up that we did with Conlug, uh, the Connecticut Lego Users Group. At, we saw them at Connecticut and got a nice interview with them. Awesome people. It's uh, mainly adults that play with Legos, which goes to prove you're never too old to play with Legos. <laughs> And I rec and if I had the room, I would have a ton of Legos. Unfortunately, our apartment's so small, I, we don't have the rooms to get all the Legos that uh, I, used I would to like. A ton of Legos. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah, because Legos are so much fun. You can get creative, and I, that's that's another thing that I laugh about. Like today's youth, there isn't much creativity. Have you noticed that? Mm. Well, it's hard. It's harder to be more creative nowadays, in my opinion. Because it's like, a lot has been done, and the things that go become creative, or, or people do, are like dabbing and things like that. So, there is a... It's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, granted, I'm of the older generation. I'm nearing 40. And I made a lot of my own entertainment growing up. We, we, I was at the start of the video games. You know, we had Atari ColecoVision mm -hmm. in the house, but could only play it sporadically. It wasn't an everyday thing. It was more. I was more of go out and play with friends, go and explore things, nice ride my bike throughout the city, um, come up with my own games you know i'd sit there with baseball cards and a bouncy ball throw the bouncy ball off the wall and have an entire nine inning baseball game oh. you know I, I would create my own entertainment and you know when legos would come in it always amazed my parents because they could give me uh, one of those big hundred dollar sets that it would have taken them four days to put together i could have it put together in an hour and a half oh wow and it got to the point where i got really good at building things and creating things and if I have pictures in front of me I don't even need to read instructions if I have the pictures on the pamphlets like okay I can go like this it goes like this boom I'm done nice I had a lot of Legos when I was a kid it was one of my favorite toys I created my own say. racing series with the Legos it was great you know you, you, I had all like, like I think it was like 12 cars all different numbers I I'm gonna really show my age. Remember the VHS tapes when you could get the blank VHS tapes? Yes. And it would come with the labels and there would be numbers in the labels? Yes. Yeah. I would take those sticky numbers and put them on the angled pieces of, of the Legos and create different car numbers. So every car was a different number so I could keep track of a point system and have an actual racing series. That's cool. Awesome. And there would be 10, 15, 20 races in the series. I had the little road uh, map no road pieces, so I could just randomly uh, uh, make a different layout with you know, six curves and a bunch of different straight pieces and have a road course or an oval or have it be a long oval, a short oval, whatever, and you know, create, try to create my own entertainment because it wasn't all video games. It wasn't smart. There was no smartphones. There was no cell phones. There, there was We didn't no. even have pagers then. You're... you're uh, you knew to be home when the street lights came on or the sun was going down. That was your, hey, you need to get your butt home time. And, uh, unless you had a sleepover. Yeah, unless you had a sleepover. Then you knew you had to be at your friend's house at that time. Uh, it, 
it was a whole different world back then. I don't think... I think that's part of what annoys me about kids today is they have all this technology. They don't know... You know, the, their entertainment is already pre-made for them for the most part. Um, well, that's our fault, though. Minecraft, though, I do hand it to them. Minecraft, I call oh, that God, video Minecraft game Legos. Minecraft is, like, crazy. Things. Minecraft is video game Legos. It's You you can do everything with my, Minecraft that you could do with Legos. You can create some of the most awesome things that I've seen. Right? Plus, you add in the fact that you have to, like, beware of monsters and zombies and skeletons and wizards and... Gizzards? Oh. Gizzards? Yeah, beware of the turkeys. You know, the three of us here on the show. Um... <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wrong, wrong, I'm sorry, I meant lizards, sorry, I got that wrong. Lizard, lizards? Yeah, lizards. Wah, wah! I found a loophole, dude. <laughs> Good gosh. I, and I, I laugh, because I still get sidetracked, because I'm still watching Nathan play this uh, game, and I'm like, this... The detail on this is pretty intricate. I it's know, it. right? And I've become very detailed oriented from doing... Uh, I'm one of those people, like, growing up, I've had way too many hobbies and not enough time or money to do any of them to the fullest potential. Because <laughs> uh, I grew up in a house of model railroading, and we had a nice HO scale layout that my father and I had worked on for many years, up until he passed away. Aww. And... Uh, so I, I always was big into the scenery, the details, and so when I'm playing video games, um, I look and it's like, wow, some of the intricacies of this, like the rocks and things like that, you can see some of the cracks in the rocks that most people would be like, not even notice. I'm like, that's really fine detail on that. <laughs> oh, this game is beautiful. Dark Souls has always been one of those games, it's like, holy crap. Now, I, there, I will catch crap for this because it bombed and I know that the creator of this game ended up going bankrupt because of it. But Kingdom Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, the Kurt Schilling I video know that game. game. Yeah, that game's um That was a tremendously put together game. The problem well done. the biggest problem with it was he put it out at the same time that there was probably five other games of the similar style. And the other games were more popular. Yes, they were. But, you know, when... I enjoyed playing it. Like, like even Diablo was more popular than this. Uh, Diablo 3 had come out around that time, too. And... Isn't it kind of like... Do you, aren't those games, games kind of like them? Um... um I think it is. Um, I'm trying to think. Um... Are they kind of like each other, though? That's the thing about it. A little bit. Oh, no. Hey, he said hello. Oh, hey. uh, I'm about going to battles with giant, giant skeleton. skeleton. Ooh. So people out there who aren't watching this live and being able to chat with us in the chat room, you're missing out on a lot of fun because we all love the interaction of the chat room. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, no one's entering the chat room. They're all afraid. You scare them with that little skeleton goblin uh, oh, glass man. thing that you're about to drink from. I didn't drink from it. <laughs> Reach out and touch uh, somebody. Yeah, it's, it's like that, that, I mean, that, that, that kind of reminds me of that, that scene in Last Crusade where the guy picks wrong. Well... I feel kind of bad because I've come on and I've done like 70% of the talking. It's no, no, good. no, we we're enjoying it. It's, it's all good. If you, were, if you were saying terrible, terrible things, we'd have hit the eject button by now and gone on, gone on. You're, you're, you're great. It's cool. I just don't... Uh, yeah. I, I want to be respectful though. That's the type of person I am. So it's like if I if I'm talking too much, just tell me to shut up. I've had guests say the same thing. And All if right. you guys have questions for me, feel free to ask because uh, I don't get asked questions very often. What is your absolute favorite anime? What, what 
what, what, what is your quest? Yes, what, what is, is your quest? quest? My quest is just to enjoy life and provide as much for my family as I can. What is your quest? <laughs> what is your favorite color? Red. My f number one favorite anime of all time and has been since that helped me get through a messy divorce is Rosario Vampire. Oh. Yeah, you do talk about that one a lot. Oh, that, that show is tremendous. And it's an older anime, very high on the fan service. Uh, and, uh, but the characters are a lot of fun. The main male character, Skune Ono, who was voiced by Todd Haberkorn, uh, is a human, is a human guy who ends up going to this college of yokai, which in Japanese means demons or monsters. And the first person he meets is a young girl named Mocha, who is a vampire. Uh, and they become friends. And oh, sure. After after that, he meets a girl named Kurumu, who is a succubus. Uh, so you can see the type of monsters he's running into. Uh, then he then he has run in with a young girl who's a witch. There's an ice demon who tur ends up being my favorite character in the show. Oh, I like her. It's, it's Misere from uh, the purple-haired chick. Always has a lollipop in her mouth. She's very quiet, shy, voiced by Tia Ballard. I forget why she has that lollipop. There's a reason. I I forget why she has a lollipop too, and I've seen both se I've seen the two seasons that are out. Is she um, got, oh, I think it's over by now. I mean, if I remember correctly, it, just the way it ends. The way it, the storyline was actually pretty entertaining. The characters were a lot of fun. It's funny how. Gune, as a human, ends up getting all these monster girls to, like, fall in love with him, and M Misere is like, I came to your house because I want to have babies with you, and, uh, it's just hysterical, the stuff that goes on, and, uh, but it, it's really a good anime. I love the anime. I, ha I haven't watched it in a while because I tr try to keep up with a lot of the newer stuff coming out. Right. Uh, but at some point I'll probably sit down and rewatch the series again. You have to. Once in a while you gotta sit down and rewatch your favorite series. Unfortunately I've been watching Gravity Falls like, like way too, too many times. times. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop you right there because there is no too many Gravity Falls. Now you can continue. Go okay. on. <laughs> I mean, it's, have you seen Gravity Falls? I have not. Oh, it's so worth it. It is hilarious, it's clever. And it's very mysterious. Yeah. It's like uh, X-Files for kids. Um, it, it, I have it seen has... Gravity Rises, but not Gravity Falls. Oh! Or uh, Gravity yeah, Rush. Yeah. <laughs> Gravity Rush seems very cool, too. No, uh, but yeah, it's about these these, these two uh, twins uh, from, from California who are... Uh, they're 12 years old, and their parents send them to live with their mysterious Grunkle Stan in uh, this tiny little woodsy town in Oregon for the summer. And they gradually discover that uh, this town, Gravity Falls, is weirdness central. And there's all sorts of weird crap going on with uh, cryptids and, uh, and, and, and sci-fi and time travel and crap like that and 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 the 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 gradual build up of the storyline is absolutely phenomenal there's there's easter eggs uh in every single episode like uh, codes in the background that people have to decode to get them like like uh cryptograms you know swapping out letters and stuff like that ciphers it's 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 amazing the depth to this mm -hmm. uh and, uh, Disney wanted to renew it for another season, but the creator was just like, "No, I gotta keep it pure. I gotta keep it solid. I'm gonna li limit it to two seasons, and that's it." And and it just, it's absolutely phenomenal. That wow. put it up there with with Firefly is one of my favorite modern TV shows of all time. That's cool. Yeah. I ha I don't watch much TV. Uh... From like when I was, when we did have cable, the only TV I really watched was sports. But well, it's Look at really that, worth a monster it. chasing you, Nathan. Yeah, uh, Gravity Falls has sports in it. Um, 
there's an episode with laser tag. Sports ball! Yeah, that's all I got. No, go on. <laughs> well, there's... But... Drop fraud, or whatever it's called. Drop fraud? About, or... about what? It's, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to spoil everything, but... It's, people in the show would know about this. I didn't hear what Grop you Grop said. Grop-nar, grop, nar, grop, grop lar. Oh. Yeah. Get ready for grop lar. I'm trying to pronounce it right. I don't know what you mean. You know, t you know, split, splendid, split, uh, god damn it. These names they put, he puts on these characters are you, so you, freaking you mean, weird. You mean Blendin' Blandin'? Blendin' Blandin'. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, because he's supposed to blend in because he's so bland. <laughs> he's something, I tell you. <sighs> but if there are enemies that I would put in my honorable honorable mention uh, that are really good are sh shows like. I, got, I became a fan of the Strike Witches series, which is God, an anime. Of, about these young girls who are witches and they are based around World War II time frame and they have to battle this alien race called the Neuroi and they're all based off of actual like World War II pilots from around the world so you can you can literally look up names like uh, Gerhard um, why am I drawing names? Yoshiki Miyafuji, there's an actual Mi Miyafuji that was a Japanese pilot. Uh, nice. Jaeger was named after Charles Jaeger, uh, an American pilot from the war. All of the uh, strike which, uh, strike, striker units that they wear are based off of the actual paint schemes of the planes from the countries they represent. The weapons are time specific. The ships are time specific. They really went into a lot of detail on this. It's very fan servicey. You're looking at girls from Welcome the age of like 10, 12 up to early 20s. And there's new, there is nudity and stuff like that in their bathing scenes, things like that. The best known is fighting the war on pants because none of them are wearing pants. Some are wearing skirts and leggings and things like pants. that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but it's an entertaining, if like looking beyond the fan service aspect of it, the, the fact that it's based around real life events, real life people is absolutely amazing and the quality oh, is uh, awesome. And then they did a spin-off because Strike Witches was based on the 501st uh, striker, uh, witch unit. Then they came out with Brave Witches, which is the 502nd unit. And, um, that was just as good. The storyline started out somewhat similar, but has its own, uh, uniqueness to it. And I, I enjoyed both series. Strike Witches has two seasons and a movie, and if you want to see it in succession, you do want to watch season one, season two, and then the movie, because you won't understand the start of the movie if you mm -hmm. haven't seen the end of season two. Oh, well, there you go. Brave Witches is a separate entity. You can watch that without having seen Strike Witches. And then my friend Gavin Goska introduced me to an anime called Girls and Panzer, which is a, a series about high school girls who decide to bring the sport of tankery to their school to try to save it and tankery is a sport of young girls who hook up in teams of like three to five girls all driving tanks and competing against other school in military grade army tanks yay <laughs> and that series was really good and it even spawned a full-length movie which was the first movie to get me out to a movie theater last year for the um and i hadn't been to the movie theater in like 15 years 20 years <laughs> but i wanted to see this in the theater and to experience these tanks firing guns in a theater atmosphere was worth driving into boston and i hate boston but it was worth driving into boston to see boston this at the theater at the theater yeah, yeah, the Boston has come out in me a little bit there. Yeah, I went to the theater to see the tanks. They fired them. That was wicked cool. Wicked. Wicked awesome. Wicked, wicked awesome. awesome.
What's the difference? I stopped at the bubble on the way out. Is there a difference the between cow. a Maine accent and a Boston accent? They are closely related because Maine and Massachusetts used to be one colony, one one state, basically. Uh, yeah. But uh, then Maine got smart and said, "Screw you guys! You're a bunch yeah. of assholes. We're becoming maniacs." Uh, yeah, we 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 out. Um, we out. Although we do still show respect Welcome. to Massachusetts for giving us the Patriots. Yeah, Thank you guys. Yeah. That's uh. <laughs> That, that the rest of the country hates us, and uh, <laughs> but that's okay. You know, it, it took a lot to dethrone uh, the Dallas Cowgirls as the most hated team in the NFL. Oh snap! All right, uh, yeah. Um, did, uh, I I think I'm the only one in 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 attendance right now who watches iZombie. But last week's episode uh, was 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 pretty awesome because the the murder victim of the week. Was a guy who was obsessed with the Seattle Seahawks and hated uh, the Patriots uh, for beating them in the Super Bowl that time. Um, and uh, um, uh, Liv, the main character, who is a zombie, ate this guy's brain, uh, and and therefore started channeling his his personality as part of their attempts to figure out who killed him. And 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 like the the. The, the actual like uh, conversations between her and many characters while she's channeling this football fanatic which is amazing the, the, the absolute bile that she she unleashed against the Patriots was just absolutely breathtaking I'm like wow is that how the rest of the country sees us oh my lord <laughs> probably and they were really happy when um um put more sports ball um What's what's their names one on um, the? Oh, the Eagles. The yeah, Eagles yeah. one. And unfortunately, yeah. a little right. bit of Schadenfreude. Yeah. Now, now I'm gonna go on the record of of saying they that I'm a it. lifelong Patriots fan, and being a lifelong Patriots fan that is nearing 40 years old, I was a fan of them when they had Steve Brogan, Andre Tippett, and they were basically the Cleveland Browns. Oh, of the NFL. Yeah. Okay. I, w I was in school, and you were embarrassed to say you liked the Patriots. Um, so the fact that they have had the run of success they have had, especially all of the, the New England sports teams, yeah. I'm, I know that we are only a few years away from the Patriots going back to Sexville. <laughs> uh, it's be going back team. to Cleveland. <laughs> it's going to be another team. Cleveland. It's going to become the dynasty. They're going to have their few years reign i don't know if it's going to be philadelphia i don't know if it's going to be houston because that uh wilson guy was unbelievable until he got hurt and i know that because i picked him up off the free agent list on uh, my fantasy football team and he outscored dak prescott every week he was healthy um so take that dallas and suck on it um but uh you know i know that it's only a matter of time before before the Patriots come back down to earth, Brady's in his 40s. He's yeah, not he's, gonna. He doesn't. He's, he's not gonna, he's gonna last in forever. Gronk may be done. He's trying to figure out if he wants to come back to the Patriots, if he wants to go to the WWE, go to Hollywood, go play with himself. I mean, nobody knows he what he wants. Go play with himself if he wishes. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I guess. Why are we talking about this? Uh, but I'm just, you know, I, I am a realistic sports fan for New England. I'm not one of the fair weather people. I'm not one of these people who are 20 years old or younger and have never known the lovable losers of the Boston sports teams. And that includes all the years of heartbreak from the Red Sox, the Celtics when they were horrible, the Bruins when everybody was happy Ray Bork got traded to the Colorado Avalanche because now he would finally win a Stanley Cup we are the only city to my knowledge that threw a parade for somebody that they traded away and won the Stanley Cup huh. how embarrassing is that yes Ray Bork was one of the greatest Bruin players of all time but they knew he would never win it, the Stanley Cup as a part of the Bruins because they sucked 
So they sent him to Colorado, and I was like one of the few people in Massachusetts that was excited that Ray Bork went to my favorite NHL team and then won the cup. I didn't realize that they had thrown a parade for him because uh, what city does that when your team can't even make the playoffs, but your star player that you traded away wins the championship? <laughs> right. That that that'd be like you know when that'd be like the Celtics tra trading away uh, Isaiah Thomas to Cleveland, and Cleveland wins the championship, and you throw a parade for Isaiah Thomas, even though he didn't do much to help. You now he yeah he was nice when he was here, and I just use him for recent because of all the crap that went down this year between him going to Cleveland and then being traded from C Cleveland, um, Cleveland and the success sucks. he had I mean... last year. No, no, no. We're, 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 we're a geek program. We're suddenly talking sports of all nature. I know! God, we have gone everywhere tonight, haven't uh -huh. we? Uh-huh. Welcome to 3.5 Geeks. If you <laughs> geek about... If you can geek about it... Yeah, wow. That's if you can geek out about it, we'll talk about it. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> I, I, dude, I can tell... You know... You can tell I'm, I have I'm, a lot of passion for a lot of things. Yeah. All right, well, it is that time. Thank you. It went by fast, too. Always oh kind of was a guess. Wrap a clip. Um, but, yeah, I mean, not that we don't like doing this, you know, it was just us, but we always like having a guest, you know? And if so, you know, you know, you want to share this plug in if you want right now? Oh, sure. Uh,. I am Doug Engler, the host and creator of Animazing Radio that you can find on blogtalkradio.com. Uh, to find us, just type in anime, A-N-I-M-E, Zing, Z-I-N-G, radio. And uh, you can find us uh, on Blog Talk Radio. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. F subscribe to us on Blog Talk. Subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Sometime we run Tuesday specials especially after conventions we'll do a convention review on tuesday sometimes if we can get a special voice acting guest and they can only do a tuesday uh because of their schedule we'll do a one hour tuesday special every now and then um mm -hmm. so follow us there coming up this sunday we have danny chambers funimation voice actress who, who is best known as her role as chise from the anime ancient magus bride uh, nice. she is also she has also voiced characters in Card Captor Sakura Clear Card, A Centaur's Life, The Morose, Mononokian, and Hina Logic. She's also been in video games such as uh, voicing Ironheart from Marvel Avengers Academy. Uh, oh, she was... oh! Riri Williams! That is awesome! Okay, yep. She was in uh, Aqua Creep, Learn Japanese, Last of the Disciples, Ah, My Girlfriend is a Demon, Vera the Barbarian. Oh. Uh, those are all video games she's been a part of. She's also been in animation, uh, inv including shows The Deep Blue Kids, Harriet Tru The Harriet Tubman Story, Ryan DeFreitz, Ties of Fate, amongst other things, Forest of Hatred. Uh, these are all f you can find on her website, uh, which is dannychambers.com. That's D A N I D. Uh, and then chambers.com so check it out we're excited about having her on that's going to be this Sunday the 11th on the 18th we have Funimation voice actor Austin Tyndall who is many many roles including Accelerator from a certain magical index and a certain scientific railgun um, he is Ruth in Ancient Magus Bride as well as so many other we round out the month of March with a artist specific show our co-host is going to be talented artist for he's an independent artist and a comic artist jay morris is going to be our co-host and independent artist karen goslin is going to be our guest so that's going to be a lot of fun because we all know each other it's going to be really silly really goofy and <laughs> um yeah anything can happen you probably get derailed like we did tonight which is not uncommon for me uh <laughs> but I want to thank you guys for inviting me onto the show tonight. It Anytime. has been a pleasure. It's always a fun chatting with you guys. Like I said, we're going to figure out when we can return the favor again and have you guys on with us. 
Nathan, thank you so much for the 3.5 Geek Show ID that you gave us. Um, we do play that uh, every now and then. I have so thank many you. show IDs, I can only play three per show. I so I try to rotate, but um, you know, we do uh, like to promote people. We recently had another podcaster on, Darcy Abramson from Geek Out with Pebbles, was a uh, guest on our show a few weeks ago. I get to have her on our show again. Yeah. Oh, she's fun. She's yeah. fun. She's lovely. We had the last time, um, uh, um, right after you, actually, like a, a few months after, and she was great. And I gotta look back, cause, uh, and I know you probably are like, I, I we need to end the show, so shut up. But <laughs> no, you got a little bit, you know. We're not like strictly time limited. Oh yeah. <laughs> but we I'm have looking, a time limit. I'm looking to see. So she she guest co-hosted with us when she was trying to figure out where to bring her show. And she was our co-host for Jay Morris, uh, Jim Taylor, and uh, Terry Doty. Uh, and I know we threw Terry Doty's name out there. If those interested in finding Terry's book, it's called One of Few. It actually is really good. Uh, you can find it on Amazon and wherever you can find books. I don't know if she has an audio book of that out yet. Uh, but it really was a great story. If you want to find out more about it, you can uh, tune in to our show look through our archives and of course i shut the page but it was our april 30th show from last year so um definitely uh something to tune into uh check that out always <coughs> always of course always check out 3.5 geeks because these guys are awesome uh, thank you i have i've had a lot of fun the two times you have invited me on the show and uh anytime that our schedules work and you want to have me back i am more than honored to come and just geek out about everything and anything as known tonight and as you can tell sometimes it's tough to get me to shut up <laughs> well you have the gift to gab um and, and the funniest part the funniest part was i talk so much tonight and there are nights on my show i can't think of what to freaking say <laughs> uh, oh that's that's, that's great, actually. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. I will send you a link on YouTube um, so you can, you know, hey, I was on the show. Check it out, you know, and enjoyed the um, lovely Dark Souls in the background. Um, uh, but it was a lot of fun, and we definitely would love to have you on again. Just not so soon. No, I'm kidding, kidding. You can come right immediately next week if you wanted to. Um, but, but I digress. Nonetheless, thank you very much. Thank you, Matt, of course, for joining, like always. And we'll see you in two weeks. And well, I'll, I'll be... Tw I stream every week. So this goes on every um, Tuesday, unless I get sick, of course, or something happens. Um, but otherwise... I stream, you know, a lot, as much as I can, so, you know, you're all the welcome to even do a Tuesday when Matt's not here, so, all right. Awesome, Too thank sorry. you so much for having me on again, guys, it has been a pleasure, and uh, I enjoy look forward to when we can all chat again. All right, Likewise. thank you. Take and Matt, down. Mike, whatever your name is, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matt, Mike. it's a pleasure chatting with you, of course. Local rando Matthew Ian Bishop. <laughs> the, rando, the rando. Where did that come from? It's just out of nowhere. R local well, rando. Well, I mean, it's supposed. To, it's supposed to be random. Uh, I was coming up with a uh, a, a, a blurb for PortCon, and I, I described uh, Nate and our friend Kim in absolutely the most glowing and 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 colorful terms possible. And I being of low self-esteem and, and, and thinking it would be funny, I just described myself as, as, as a local rando. Like, the, I don't have qualifications to be here, I'm just some dude. <laughs> but anyway, yes. Uh, good to see you, Doug. Nate, have a good one. I will uh, see you again on Friday. Yep. Take care. Alright, All right, take care, man. Bye. Yep. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>